Hey guys, it's Hillbilly Talk with Shane Simmons back again. I went out and voted early, fought the crowds, battled my way through, filled out my ballot, and the second I put it in the scanner, wouldn't you know, it just like that. I turned into exactly what Joe Biden said. Is garbage an upgrade from white trash? That's what I'd like to know. Okay, okay, in all seriousness, was has there ever been a dumber political move than... Yeah, surely to goodness you've seen it by now. If not, you need to look it up where Joe Biden refers to Trump supporters as garbage. You know, that was just, uh These last few days, and I mean, you know, obviously every election is like this. There's a zigzag, zig, man, emotions go this way, that way. Because uh, I guess it all started Sunday in Madison Square Garden when comedian Tony Hinchcliffe uh, made the statement about Puerto Rico being a floating island of garbage, and that really, you know, got things started. And it's so funny because I know I've talked to you guys before about going to Las Vegas and I was really torn between, I was going to go watch Kill Tony, uh, which has Tony Hinchcliffe, of course, and then Wayne Newton. And I chose Wayne Newton. I did the right thing. <laughs> Had a great time, no regrets. But it's kind of funny that all of a sudden he's this major factor in a political, like, and realistically, who knows, that could have cost Trump the election. You just don't know. Porter gets very much offended by that, obviously, apparently, and... Uh, so, you know, who knows? And then Joe Biden just had to just, I tell you what, I'm just going to raise the stakes on that one. You think that's bad? I'll smear your entire side of the uh, coin. So, <laughs> ah, ah, God bless him. But in all fairness, I mean, Joe Biden, honestly, he's so diminished cognitively that it's just, I mean, he doesn't know his own name half the time, you can tell, and it's pitiful. It's really just scary to think who in the world is running this country uh, that... Can you imagine if something happened with Russia or any of the other China? During his remaining presidency, it is terrifying to think that this man is who we're counting on to have the right answers for stuff. It's just scary. I mean, I, I wouldn't trust him to choose what to have for breakfast. But having said that, you know, it's for me, it's hard to take him too seriously. It's good for humor. And if you saw tonight, Donald Trump showed up, and of course, I mean, you knew, I just knew he was going to take advantage of that. He's like Saturday Night Live now. Like, you give him an inch, and he runs with it in the funniest way possible, because I, I didn't see that coming, that he would be in a garbage truck with the orange jacket on, the whole nine yards, and taking questions from the press. It was just, he's a marketing genius and a comedic genius. And that's one of the reasons I actually like him is I think he's funny. I'm sorry. I, I know that that's not <laughs> relevant to being a good president, but I just, he amuses me and I, I don't want to see him go away. So that was just pure genius on his part. Anyway, getting off that topic and into the real question of the day, I had somebody message me yesterday after we were talking about the election, of course, and they asked about the people who live in the areas affected by Hurricane Helene and if they're able to vote. And have good news on that is that yes, they are. Now it's obviously it's a little bit more difficult, sure, but about 90% of the polling areas are, uh, the, the, are open for voting. And so far from what I've read, researched and studied did the actually really good turnout, surprisingly. I know Buncombe County, which is where Asheville is at, they have 214,530 registered voters. They've been averaging for early voting around 7,000 voters a day. So you're talking about in the course of 10 days, that's 70,000 people. And obviously, even though you have 214,000 registered voters, not all those people vote ever. So I think last presidential election is right around 150,000 people voted. So it gives you kind of an idea that they're on pace to probably hit or maybe even exceed that in this election. And Buncombe, again, like I said, is the home of Asheville, which is historically split 60% or more for the Democrats and upper 30s, around 40 for Republican candidates. So that is good news for Kamala Harris. It's also, you got some other counties that are involved in this too, though. You got Yancey and Avery and all these other smaller counties, but they are the exact opposite of Buncombe in the sense that they vote very strongly Republican. So it's probably, at the end of the day, my guess is it'll be about a wash. So it really doesn't make all that much difference like it could have. Obviously, if had that had that been much more difficult to open these up. Now, you also got to think, too, who's super motivated to vote? Well, and, and, did, and did Hurricane Helene itself, did it motivate people to vote a different way or vote in general when maybe they wouldn't have? 
very likely that for at least a few people, and again, North Carolina, just like a lot of these other swing states, may come down to a few people. So everything, every person, every factor matters tremendously. So it very well could, you know, the dissatisfaction with government response, which is still very strong out there. You don't hear me talk about it or see it as much as you do on this outwardly because people are just tired of complaining into the wind. But there's a lot of dissatisfaction with how the government has responded to the Hurricane Helene fallout. So there's that. Like I said, Buncombe County, 214,000 voters. It's Buncombe is the seventh largest county in North Carolina. So Buncombe County had originally scheduled to have 14 different place or early voting sites, and they've got 10. So pretty well covered if you're you know you're willing to travel a little bit. That's no problem whatsoever. And they're hoping to have 80 as of election day. They even have a FEMA tent as a polling location and. They're going to end up having 500 county poll workers, so that's going to be pretty well covered for for Buncombe County. I've noticed too that Avery County has a huge turnout already of their voters. There's a uh, in Yancey County. Yancey County has 14,600 voters. So I said dramatically smaller than Buncombe, but almost a third of their voters have already voted early. So. Let's just show you there's a lot of passion going into this election. And like I said, this area probably will be a wash. Probably, I mean, Buncombe, like I said, is so strong, but there's, I want to say in North Carolina, there's maybe 13 counties affected. And I would say then 12 of those counties would be strong Republicans. And then, of course, Buncombe would just about offset all of that with its strong Harris support. So I still think it might be, uh, you know, when you really add them all together, you're talking about, like I said, several different counties it would be probably a little bit of a net gain for the republicans so this is very important that it got back on schedule as, as it were and i also think that if anything if if the hurricane affected the way people vote it would be favorable to trump just because there's a lot of dissatisfaction fair or unfair i think it's fair some people could argue with that but i think fema's response and some of the other government response was slow and and uh, lacking so if people are happy with that then you know they're probably all right but I, I think there's more passion behind anger as we all know so if somebody's mad about that they're probably more motivated to get out and vote for trump that's just my uneducated hillbilly guess that's why it's called hillbilly talk i'm just an old hillbilly out here talking what do i know i ain't i'm no uh, tucker carlson i'm no you know rachel maddow i'm no you know i'm just an old boy out here talking but yeah, people ask about that, and I feel like, and even Damascus too, like I vote in Washington County, Virginia, which is where Damascus is located as well, and there were people from Damascus voting while I was there, so, and I saw that firsthand. You can navigate, I mean, the roads are not, the main roads, obviously, I-40, I mean, I-20, where I-40 was affected too, but I-26 going south into Asheville is just destroyed, but there's other secondary roads that you can navigate if need be to get around. It's not just completely still cut off from the world. You know, I don't know how people perceive it, but that's, you can get there. It's just not as easy as it should be or, or once was. And, uh, but the voting's going on and strong turnouts. So I don't think that this will hinder the natural outcome. That's what the, the biggest concern is. You want the will of the people to win. And if people couldn't vote that wanted to vote and would have sway, swayed the election, I think that would have been a terrible outcome. But fortunately, it appears that it's not going to be the case that the people that are motivated to vote have the access and ability and passion to do that. So we will see a fair and balanced outcome that will satisfy no one probably, but that's just the way it works. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. I will talk to you later.